Brand new video? How we created this crazy dog squad pack? Yeah, wanna hug me? Okay, cool. All right, let me just get resituated and then we'll, we'll be right back in one second. I wanna share with you guys how Kara and myself created the dog pack of our dreams. Now to know, I'm not saying this is what you have to do. I just wanna share what worked for us in creating this family pack dynamic. Before we get into today's video, I want you all to comment down below if you have more than one dog, how long do you feel like it took for the two of your dogs to really adjust and acclimate together? The first thing Kara and myself did is find a dog breed that fits our lifestyle and a breed that we knew we could handle and train with our skill level. Now, Akane Corso isn't for everyone. I definitely don't recommend it being your first dog that you get. The breed is always going to be here, so don't rush getting Akane Corso if you're not ready with your lifestyle or your training ability. Before you get any breed of dog, I really recommend you do a ton of research. You can take online quizzes to help you find the right breed for you, for your lifestyle, for your skill level on training the dog. And that is what essentially Kara did. I knew I wanted a Kane Corso for so long and I knew I could handle one, but she also needed to make sure that it would fit what she wants in a dog. I was convinced it wouldn't, and honestly, those quizzes were very insightful, very helpful. If you forget any breed of dog, do a ton of research to make sure it fits your lifestyle with exercise, training, feeding. Um, there's so much that goes into a dog more than just letting them out to the bathroom and giving them food and water. You really want to make sure that the breed fits your lifestyle, their personality fits your lifestyle and what you're looking for a dog, your training ability fits with what your abilities are in training said breed. There's no rush in getting Kane Corso. I definitely don't recommend it being your first dog you ever get because it's one of those breeds you don't want to make mistakes with and learn on the fly with. I wanted the Kane Corso for a very, very long time. I knew it was the dog of my dreams. I knew I could handle the breed. I knew I could train the breed. I knew it just matched personality wise of what I wanted. But even with that said, we have two people living in the house. So also the dog need to match what she needs for in a dog. So she took a ton of online quizzes, which helped just confirm that this breed is right for her. I honestly was trying to convince myself this breed was not meant for me. So I kept taking multiple different quizzes and they were very insightful. They were actually very helpful. And with taking different quizzes, I kept getting the same style dog. If you want a Kane Corso, I definitely recommend just taking a deep dive into my channel. I have a ton of uh, educational videos, such as why you can't own a Kane Corso, cost to feed a Kane Corso, cost to own a Kane Corso, which will just help you decide and if a Kane Corso is right for you. And make sure you guys subscribe because these videos can be very helpful. And we're always putting out a bunch of educational videos that will help you in your dog training help you raise that perfect companion that you're always looking for. Anytime someone tells me they want this breed, I always direct them to this channel because we've had such good feedback. A lot of times when we meet you all, you've told us watching these videos have helped you decide you need to wait on this breed yep. or you know this breed isn't meant for you, but you really enjoy the videos. And a lot of people just want a giant dog, but maybe a kind of course wasn't right for you at that time. Definitely check out the English Mastiff. They're much easier to train and they're actually bigger than the Kane Corso. So maybe that's the breed that you that would be perfect for your lifestyle right now. The next thing we did is we didn't rush adding a second dog to our pack. We knew we wanted the second Kane Corso, but the time had to be right. And I didn't want to add a second dog until Bruce Wayne was fully trained. Now, a lot of people I feel like make the mistake of either getting two puppies in a very close time frame or getting two puppies from the same litter, which I never recommend because there is something called littermate syndrome. Definitely do your research on littermate syndrome. But getting two puppies at the same time is extremely stressful on the people. Yeah. And the issue is when you're training a dog, it's going to pick up off tendencies off of the other dog. Joey Justice was super easy to train. So easy. We nice. barely even trained him. Yes, we had to do the formal puppy training, like potty training and all that stuff together. But our main goal in training our dogs was creating this bond and this relationship between the dogs so we could all live in harmony because they're two intact males. Now what happens is if you get two puppies, you have one puppy with a bad habit, the other puppy is very likely to pick up that bad habit. It's gonna make it way harder to train versus waiting till you have a well house-mannered dog like Bruce Wayne, for example, and then the puppy can look up to your other dog and then the other dogs leading by example, making the, the puppy much easier to train. Now, if you're getting a puppy, even if you've had puppies before and you know how to train puppies, when was the last time you had a puppy? Puppy training is stressful. 
So we have a bunch of online training courses that'll help take off that stress, help take away that guesswork, such as the perfect puppy course. It's linked down in the description box below. Even beyond that, when your dog gets past puppyhood, we have the perfect canine companion course. And these courses will take you step by step on how to train your dog to be the perfect canine companion. It removes a ton of guesswork. You're not going to make mistakes and train your dog the wrong way, which with a Kanye course, you definitely don't want to do. And if you use code Jason, you do save 10% off all of the training courses linked in that description box below. I also think not only thinking about if it's a good time for you to get a puppy, but also for the other dog, for us with Bruce, I think this was a great time to get a new puppy because it kind of reinvigorated his life. Like it gave him a different excitement to his life again even though it took some adjustment i know we've seen that having that second dog i feel has increased his quality of life the next thing is we had to consider bruce wayne we knew how he was going to react we knew how he was with dogs i get a lot of people that dm me saying i have a this breed or that breed should i get a kind of corso and only you can answer that because only you know your dog you can't force a dog to like another dog. Just like you don't like everyone you meet, your dog's not gonna like everyone you meet. You really want your dog to mature and understand your dog fully. And then you wanna try to match a puppy to their energy, to their personality, so they mesh as good as possible. And even then it may not happen. And this is where a good breeder can really help you out. Our breeder knows Bruce Wayne very well. She knew we wanted the second dog and we were waiting for a very long time to find that perfect match. Right. She contacted me and said, hey, I think I have a good match for Bruce and for you guys. I was so nervous. <laughs> so we ended up getting Joey Justice and they have different personalities, but their, their personalities still mesh and match very, very well. So a big part of this equation was finding a, a match for Bruce Wayne. The one thing I felt confident with, with understanding that there was obviously gonna be an adjustment period that could feel a little uncomfortable and that we'd have to work through, was knowing Bruce Wayne so well and how, I guess, I don't know if tolerance the right word, but he was always very confident and tolerant with other dogs. He certainly enjoyed some dogs more than others, but he was always a dog that just kind of did well with other dogs. Yeah. Whether he loved them and wanted to play or he didn't care about them, but he still was able to tolerate them. I think that made me more confident with bringing in Joey Justice, knowing that even if it is an adjustment period, he's gonna adjust and it's gonna be okay. And it actually turned out better than I thought. And one thing that helped was socializing him with other dogs. Yes. Now you can't, like I said, you can't force your dog to like other dogs. Some dogs just don't like other dogs. And then you just can't get a second dog right. because you really have to consider the dog you have at home already. And that may be nothing you did wrong. It just may be your dog's personality. So many people just feel like their dogs have to like other dogs. And they don't, or they think they should like all dogs. And that's just something that we even with the best training, you may not change that. It just may be yep. part of that dog. My thing was the dog just has to tolerate other dogs, which is why we socialize him around other dogs as a puppy. The next thing we did with bringing in Joey Justice was not so much focusing on that training of sit, stay, those commands with him, but more so focusing on building the relationship between Bruce Wayne and Joey Justice. Yes, we still had to do all the main basic things with Justice training him, such as potty training and everything like that, that the perfect puppy course will guide you step by step through. But like Kara said, relationship building was what our main concern was. And I have a ton of videos. I was actually daily vlogging when we got Justice, showing how I built this relationship between the two. Because Bruce Wayne's already very bonded to us. And then as a puppy, your puppy's going to be bonded to you. So I had to basically get us all living in harmony. And basically what I did was everything with Bruce and Justice, I would make fun for Bruce. So for example, I'd play tug of war with them. As I'm playing tug of war, I'd be sitting there massaging Bruce's ears because he likes it so much. So now he's got his mouth on the toy, Justice's mouth is on the toy, and he was playing very gentle with Justice. But so they're, they're touching the toy together as I'm giving him this physical touch, making him feel good. What else did we do? We did a lot of social outings. We did a lot of social outings together. We would bring to, we would- Coffee shop to the gym. All the fun places that Bruce always really enjoyed. We did it as a group, as a pack. And we always made it happy and fun for, really for Bruce. You know, we really focused a lot during this time on Bruce Wayne, actually more than justice. Mm -hmm. And another thing that was just such a prize to Bruce was bringing him to daycare. So. 
What a huge change that first time that we brought Justice to daycare with Bruce. Yes. Bruce was like, oh, we do this together. Yep. That really bonded them too. I saw an immediate shift when we brought them home from daycare that day. Now, we don't bring them to daycare too much anymore together because Bruce Wayne is pretty protective of Justice. And I just don't trust things without me and Kara there. I trust Bruce around other dogs and stuff, but I just want to be there if he's with Justice because he is protective. Right. And oddly enough, Justice is starting to get his guardian instincts. I actually have a, a good video up on Instagram where I walk out the door, Justice on a leash, and Amazon comes up, and he starts growling. And, and, and Such a good video. Yep. And that's what he's supposed to be doing. He's not supposed to want strangers on the property. There's people saying, oh, my God, your dog's reactive. He's a Conde Corso. He's a guard dog. He wasn't reactive. That was doing what he's supposed to do. He's not supposed to want strangers on his property. <laughs> um, so I just want to be around Bruce and Justice when they're around other dogs together. I actually have an amazing video when he was really young and we had a Conde Corso meetup with some friends and Bruce was extremely protective of Justice, um, but in a very controlled manner. Mm -hmm. So I definitely highly recommend checking that out because I narrate it and I break it down. Amazing display of guardian instincts and Bruce in that video. And the last thing we did is we established pack hierarchy and we stuck to it militantly. Like even to this day, he's a little bit over two. We stick to that pack hierarchy like perfect. And the pack hierarchy goes Jason, Kara, Bruce, Justice. And the pack hierarchy is that way because I did a lot of the training because when she'd be at work, I'd be with the dogs all day. So they would look up to me first before her. That's what, so basically that's how the pack hierarchy was set. It's not like, oh, I want to be number one. It was just set in the dog's minds like that. Yeah, it made the most sense. So what does it mean we stick to pack hierarchy? Well, very simple. Bruce walks out the door first before Justice. Bruce walks in the door before Justice. Bruce gets handed a treat before Justice. They can eat at the same time, but Bruce gets called over and handed his plate first. Even in the morning when I get up and walk out the bedroom, Bruce gets greeted first. Same for me too. Even though Bruce is older and doesn't get up and walk over to me, Justice will walk up to me. I won't even pet Justice. I'll walk past Justice, not even looking at him, just literally looking at Bruce and give him a little pet before I give Justice attention, just to keep that pack hierarchy. Again, they're two intact males. We don't want any competition. We don't want to blur those lines of who's who in the pack. We're trying to keep those lines not blurred, no gray areas whatsoever. And it's honestly, I think it makes it the least confusing for justice. So for anyone that's like, oh, that poor dog, honestly, he respects the hierarchy. He respects the relationship. Like Jason just mentioned with that example, first thing in the morning, He'll wiggle over to me. I'll pet Bruce first and Justice will come over and he'll see that and he'll sit right down politely and lay down and he'll wait his turn. And the moment he does that like a good boy is when I give him that that love and that first greet in the morning. It keeps it as least confusing as possible. And if they know where they're at within the pack, everyone's happier. Yep. And I know we say our dogs are kids, but we know they're dogs. Yeah. And a lot of people blur that line way too much. We treat our dogs like dogs. Don't call your dog all the time. Don't be like, oh, oh, I love you so much. Did your dog earn that? No, my dog's sitting here. He doesn't earn that, you know? Make your dog earn everything and then give it to him. Make them earn your love. Make them earn your respect. Make them earn their spot on the couch. Yeah. You know, it just makes it easier and it keeps the respect and it keeps their manners proper in the house. Anytime I have kind of fallen victim to wanting to just coddle them too much when it's not earned, when it's not deserved, I have seen, at least with justice, that it does kind of blur the lines of me being the leader versus me being his playmate. And I quickly remind her, and she doesn't like to hear it. (laughs) <laughs> at all well no one likes to hear when they're wrong or doing something wrong but then she changes it. and within a day the dog just goes reverts back to how he should be but it makes a difference too with just being a leader and following commands and then in turn it just makes my life easier because i know he'll listen to me more and safety and respect is so much more important than me loving up on my dog 24 7. Still love up on them. Being a good dog leader doesn't mean babying your dogs, doesn't mean giving your dogs everything you they want. It means establishing rules and boundaries, being fair to your dog, and sticking to those rules and boundaries. Giving your dog the time and attention that they need without 
babying them. It's been amazing watching their relationship grow and change over time. It keeps continuing to change over time because a dog ages so fast compared to a human. It's like on fast forward. So we're constantly seeing these changes and we're constantly adapting to these changes. So as a dog leader, you need to just be able to read your dog and make the changes as they're changing. And we're seeing it now. Roost is actually looking after Justice in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and Justice is actually looking after Bruce now the past couple months, I would say. And it's really interesting to see it and witness. And it's an amazing, beautiful thing. And I couldn't be happier with this pack of dogs we have. I feel like I'm so blessed that we have this relationship between all of us. And I couldn't be happier. This is what I always wanted in life with dogs. And uh, I have to thank Kara for trusting me so we can have this together. It has been so nice to see the relationship just continue to evolve and grow. It's very interesting just while Justice is still maturing because he's not fully mature yet, right? And Bruce is getting older, so those shifts just keep happening and it just seems like their relationship does keep getting better and they are always looking after each other and there's just something very sincere and endearing about that but at the same time we're always still paying attention to the energy between the two of them just making sure nothing's weird or wonky between the two of them and I don't know it's just really nice because when I think back to when we first got justice those first few weeks were such an adjustment that you almost think oh my god how are we ever gonna make this work but just trusting the process, doing everything that we did and being so strong in our leadership with it all, it, it just shows how much it's paid off. And honestly, it, it's made it so easy within this within this family. And I love it. So make sure you guys subscribe on the way out. Smash that like button. Leave us a comment down below if you have a dog squad, how many dogs you have and how the relationship is. I would love to know. And until next time, Bruce Wayne, Joey Justice, Kara Corey and myself. See you later. Peace.